Welcome back to uh, another edition of DXB Today. I say another edition, it's quite a significant one. It is the first episode of a brand new season. What a season we have in store. And that's why we're theming it about a few things that you can look forward to over the next two months. Uh, and to tell us a bit more about that, what better guest to have than Hur Al Khaja, who is the Senior Vice President, International Operations, Dubai Economy and Tourism. Thank you for being with thank us. You. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having you. me. Because I can imagine it's a busy time in the office yes. at the moment at DET. Let's just talk with that at the moment, because I remember when Dubai tourism, Dubai economy merged yes. together. And just how significant is that? Because a lot of people will look at the two and the two separate entities, but the two, I suppose, go hand in hand. Tourism is part of Dubai's economy. It's definitely one of the biggest contributors to Dubai's economy. And I think it was obviously a very wise and sound move from um, His Highness. Um, as we gear towards his D33 vision, which yeah. for those of you who don't know is Dubai's kind of 10 year vision to the year 2033 to double the economy of the city. It just makes sense for, you know, it just enhances the collaboration, enhances the efficiencies. Tourism is a major, if not one of the most major components of the economy. But you use that word enhance. And that's what I always sort of focus on is that, and the, the team were just talking about it, you know, yet another uh, global index and Dubai charts very well against some of the biggest cities in the world with huge sort of investment into their tourism over many, many years. Given what we've achieved so far in a, in a short period of time, how do you enhance it? How do you enhance it so quickly as well, the challenges? So I think that's always been kind of Dubai's USP, if I may, yeah. right? It's always like, okay, we, 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 we're we very, we don't really stop to celebrate the wins. We're like, okay, what's next? <laughs> what's next? And that's really what drives the whole city like from, a, from top down, right? And it's what makes us so agile. Yeah. So when we look at, you know, if you were trying to double the GDP, you're trying to make this one of the top three places in the world for business and for leisure, those are going to come with, you know, needs. Um, you have to, the supply has to meet demand. Demand is already growing. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to enhancements, it's going to cover all sectors of the economy, you know, for different people. And this is kind of what we're here to talk yeah, about yeah, today, so. right? Well, we're hustlers over here, aren't we? Yes, yes. Uh, we were talking about Dubai being you know, one of the most livable cities in the world, but also a top tourist destination right now. Could you share any developments or future projects? So there's always exciting things happening. Maybe I'll uh, walk through a few uh, when it comes to hotels. Obviously, with we're catering to so many different nationalities, so many different. We had a record year um, last year, Dubai's highest year ever. We don't even talk about pre-pandemic anymore. Mm. We just compare to 2023 and, and onwards and upwards. We're always going to have to house people, right, in more and more mm. hotels. So we just opened um, the George Soros Collection has the Lana at Business Bay. It's been very well received. We have exciting ones coming up like the Jumeirah Marsal Arab, uh, Six Senses, the Palm. So you'll you'll see bigger and bigger representation across the city, and not just you know not just the five star luxury brands, but across the different star categories because. We do want to maintain our diversity and cater to different budgets and different people. The right? roves of the world. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, in terms of attractions, you know, we just opened the Real Madrid theme park, uh, Real Madrid World, the first of its kind, super exciting, such a huge, uh, such a huge brand, um, which obviously we also have a partnership with as DET and in addition to Emirates. So it really works so nicely together, the tourism aspect, the tra travel aspect, and now the attractions aspect. So Real Madrid is a big part of, you know, the Dubai story right now and what they hold as a brand equity is, is huge. Restaurants are very big. There's <laughs> always, I mean, if we sit and talk about restaurants, we're not going to end. Yeah. I do want to pinpoint one that really should be on everyone's maps. Uh, Garbu. It's a Dubai concept. Sorry, say that again? It's called Gurbu, it's an Arabic word, which means like, it's what we say when we welcome people to come eat with us, like a Gurbu, come closer. That's what it literally means, but it's, it's used for food. Um, and it's basically a concept by Tashkil, which is, I'm not gonna say it's an Emirati restaurant, but it's all about Dubai cuisine. So as we grew up in Dubai, we had foods like Indian foods, Levant foods, Emirati foods, and you'll get to try all of that in a very, very, uh, upper scale uh, that concept. Located? It's by Tashkil and Nadi Shiba. It's done. It's doing a soft opening now. It's making the rounds. But once it opens up, it's really going to change the the scene, um, the food scene. In the we industry. say Arbu. But yeah, yeah. I'm going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. exactly that word, uh, Arbu. Um, so yeah, so across all of, you know, uh, oh, and of course you, we're talking about livability, so it's not just about the, the, the glitz and the glam, it's also about the infrastructure and making people's lives more efficient and easier. So there's also been the announcement of the Dubai Metro 30 kilometer expansion of the Blue Line mm -hmm. that's going to connect uh, basically the airport to so many different parts of the city, all the way from like uh, Rashidiya, Academic City, Silicon Oasis, Dubai Festival City, and Dubai Creek Harbor. So that's, you'll always see us continue to work on those developments and that's what Dubai is committed to as a city. 
we've been talking about how the next kind of six weeks are going to be so busy between like kind of everything kicking off now and the next Eid. So there must be some exciting local events that you should want people to head down Definitely. to. So right now the Dubai Comedy Festival is live. Uh, it's running until um, uh, April, uh, April 21st. Um, it's so many different lineups in so many languages as well, English, Arabic, Hindi, mm. uh, uh, French. Um, and then right as we kick, as we wrap that festival up, we open up with two festivals side by side. We have the uh, sports and e-gaming festival mm -hmm. uh, on the 19th and also the Dubai food festival, which will run through to May 12th. Also coincides with ATM, which is the Arabian travel market, which is the biggest travel and tour. So it's not just leisure events, right? We also have the business events happening, coinciding, mm. because these events are supposed to cater to residents and tourists alike. So you even you come here for business, there's so many things going on. Mm. And then we move into, I mean, obviously in parallel, there's so many concerts happening. We have on May, I believe it's 11 and 12th at the opera, we have some beautiful um, upcoming Disney performances. When I say Disney, I mean Star Wars and Pirates of the Caribbean, which <laughs> are obviously owned by Incredible. Disney. You can watch the movies with a live orchestra, orchestra. Um, for those oh, big fans. Um, and then I, I'm sure it's already the talk of the town. Hans Zimmer's making his return yeah. on the 31st. I caught that show last year. If you didn't catch it, you must. You must. It was phenomenal. He's a true advocate of Dubai. I mean, my team members who, who had the privilege of working with him, he was so inspired by the soul of the city that, you know, for, for, for those of you who attended last year, he actually created a soundtrack for Dubai that he plays in that it's concert. It's incredible. Wow. So, so many so people. special. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be absolutely fantastic, the Hans Zimmer concert. Now, you very kindly mentioned some of the incredible events. I want to delve a little deeper into some of, you know, the actual heritage and the rich culture that we have here in the UAE, because some people have been here, or they'll visit, or they've even lived here for a long time, and there's not, they haven't experienced that. What would you recommend? So as uh, you know, someone who works on the tourism board, I get asked if, if I'm here only for 24 hours or you know, what's the one place you should go to? And I, my answer never changes. Take the time and go to Al Fahidi district. So oh, yeah. it's, you know, it's definitely where the soul of Dubai is. Um, you get to see this beautiful you know, contrast between the old and the new. You just and, and there's no there's no itinerary. You walk around, you'll you'll stumble into the coffee museum, you'll stumble into the Sheikh Mohammed Center for Cultural Understanding. You're just like a Abra right away from the spice market, the gold souk, the textile Amazing. market. We actually people think it's like a touristy area. No, no, we go there. Like before my <laughs> wedding, my mom took me to the gold souk and we oh. bought all my new jewelry from there. Right, okay. People go there. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's, so so as a tourist, you'll come and see this is what we actually do right. in day to day. Yeah. Um, definitely the, there's a lot of museums as well other than the Etihad Museum on Jumeirah Road which obviously offers a beautiful insight into the making of the UAE and the history of the UAE there's other museums towards Shandaga like Saruq Al Hadid Archaeology Museum the Women's Museum the Pearl Museum so there's a lot of like small small museums that you can walk by mm. and just you know if you want to get away from the malls if you want to get away from the attractions you want to see what the city is really about and the yeah. true history of the city um, I really recommend those areas and maybe I'll add one more which is a free attraction as long as you get your transport Go to Al Qudra Desert as well. Oh, Spend yeah. a day in the desert. Just watch the sunset. Take a don't even like just pack something with you. Pack a sandwich. It's just a great way to really feel the soul of the Love city. it. Oh, I love it so much. Well, thank you so much. Thank as Tom said me. at the beginning, we know you're extremely busy. So genuinely, thank you for taking thank the time. You thank you so me. much. You. For now, though, we are going to throw over <laughs> right there to Dina Bussi <laughs> for DXB in 60. Okay, Farah, it's me and you. Oh. I'm, put, I'm putting you in the spot over here. Here I am. We've got DXB and 60. I'm going to ask Farah as many questions as possible for her to answer. Oh. No, no, I really, really like how you off guard here. It's only about you, so hopefully you know the answer. Oh, okay, right, fine. Okay, let's, let's cue the clock. Three, two, one. Let's go. If you weren't working in the media industry, what would you be doing? Oh. Something with water, anything like marine biologist, something like that. I can't okay. do biology. Your first job? Glamour. I worked as, yeah, in a cafe. Your motto in life and in work? Oh, um, be nice people. You never know who they are. <laughs> a superpower you wish you had? Superpower I wish I had? Oh, flying. A book you've been reading? A book I've been reading. At the moment, I'm reading a book called Really Good, actually. Oh, oh, it's really good. It's called, okay, it's called it's really called. good. Uh, a podcast that you'd recommend? Uh, well, I'm biased, so I've, I'm on Culture Bites, so I have to plug that. But I also absolutely love a podcast called My Therapist Ghosted Me. A must-visit place for art lovers in Dubai, which we were Ooh, just talking about. Art lovers in Dubai. I mean, Al-Sakar Avenue, of course. Al Your go-to place in Dubai? For anything? 
Yes, the place that you absolutely just love going to. Kinoya. For, I go for food and it's just like a nice relaxing. Where? Kinoya, the Japanese Kinoya. restaurant. Kinoya. Oh, I love that place. Last, lastly, why Dubai? Why That's Dubai? question. Why not Dubai? Why, why would it be anywhere else? It has like, it's safe, it's warm, it's sunny all the time. And we've got a great balance of life here. I agree with you. Well done. Thank well you. done, really. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed, it. Nailed it. It right, wasn't a test. <laughs> big thank you for you for joining us today. Thanks for co guest co-hosting. Uh, on uh, our look ahead to what uh, this city promises, Theron. And a big thank you also to whoever for joining us uh, in what must be a busy, busy time for you. So thank you very much indeed. Talk you off busy. Do not go anywhere. Why? Because we're getting busy with uh, the one and only Jay Abo, who is dropping a brand new signal with us here next.